Hello YouTube, fellow math students and math teachers, DeVore here again, and today we are going to be tackling the task called Features of Functions. This can be found in the Mathematics Visions Project Math 1 textbook in Module 5, I believe is the third task in the module. We're going to go through a variety of graphs and says we want to determine if it's a function. We need the key features and they give us several examples. We need where it's increasing, decreasing, maximum, minimum, domain, range, x and y intercepts, and potentially any other interesting information that we might need. First thing that we need to figure out is, is this a function? With graphs, it's actually the easiest place where we can check to see if something's a function. We have what is called the vertical line test. The vertical line test says that if I take a line, I'm going to draw a vertical line, see, like this with my pen, and no matter where I draw it in my function, it should only cross my graph once. If it crosses more than once, it cannot be a function. End of story. Now I'm drawing some cute little lines here, and they're crossing in exactly one spot, which means that indeed this is a function, which means that we need to find the rest of this stuff. So domain, range, max, min, whoop, increasing, decreasing, and they also want the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. Okay. Domain. Remember that we're going from left to right like we're reading a... We're going left to right like we're reading a book. Our smallest value is at negative 3, our largest value is at 4, and there are no gaps anywhere in there. It's just continuously going from one to the other. We can also see that there are filled in dots here at the ends, which means it can be negative 3, it can also be 4. Range, remember, is up down. We look for our lowest value, and we look for our highest value going up down, and then we look to see if there are any gaps. Our lowest value looks to be at zero down here. And our highest value is up here, what looks like four. And again, we have these filled in dots, which tells us that we are dealing with uh, the closed bracket here. Okay, maximum value. Look at the graph. Oh look, there's a nice little peak right there at x equals 1. Now you could put the point 1, 4 if you would like. I have absolutely no problem with that. Some teachers prefer one or the other. I personally think that this is easier to read because I can just go to x equals 1 and go up and I can find it myself. Uh, some teachers do have an opinion. Please make sure you check if you are not in my class. The minimum value is of course the lowest value of our graph, which is over here at t equals 4, or sorry, not t, x, there we go. And that's our only minimum value. Let's look at where it is increasing, and this will be a little easier if I erase these lines here. Looks like it's increasing going from left to right. We're going up, 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 and then down, down, down. Let's focus on that up, up, up part. Looks like it's going from negative 3 to 1 with no gaps anywhere in between. And then it is decreasing from 1 to 4. Again, with no gaps. Finally, let's look at x-intercepts. Our x-intercepts, remember, is where it crosses the x-axis, which is at the point like 4, 0. It's right there at the very end. The y-intercept is, looks like it's going to be a little bit trickier. It's right here where it crosses the y-axis, so it's going to be at 0, uh, 1, 2, 3, we'll call that 3 and a quarter. That's probably close enough. And that's it. That's pretty much our graph right here. Cool. Uh, one thing that I would like also for you to look at is tell me if it is discrete or continuous. It doesn't explicitly mention in the directions, but I would like you to do it. Remember that continuous means that you can draw the whole graph without ever having to lift up your pencil. And discrete means you will have to 
you will have to lift up your pencil in order for you to draw it. Now I could draw this easily without lifting up my pencil, which means that this is a continuous graph. If you need, again, if you need reminders about what that means, please come talk to me and I will be more than happy to clear that up for you. Here's our next function. It's this lovely sideways parabola thing. First thing we need to determine is if it is indeed a function. And um, a look, it doesn't work. Past here, pass through here. This is not a function. We are no longer worried about any of the other things that we were having to find for that for the one we just did. If it's not a function, we just leave it alone. Okay, number three. We have this function. Let's check to see if it is a function, actually, before I say anything. Do, do, do. And you can draw as many or as few of these points as you need. And yeah, this looks like it is a function, which means that we need a domain, range, max, min, increasing, decreasing, x intercept, y intercept. And these, this becomes fairly automatic once you really get into it. Okay, domain, we're looking left, right. And oh look, we've got these nice big dots here. So we know that we're gonna be having closed brackets, though those hard brackets, but let's see where this is gonna end up. One, two, three, let's see, it looks like it, we're at negative eight. Looks like negative eight to me. And then we look all the way to the right, we look for our biggest value and it's 10. You always put smallest value than largest value. If you flip them, I will be very sad. You will get a little sad face on your paper. Please do not flip them. The range, remember, we're going up down, so let's look at the lowest point, which looks like it is at negative three. And we go up, 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 up to five. That seems to be where we're at. All right, the maximum value, let's see where that ends up, it's gonna be up here somewhere. And oh look, it's right here, here at the very end at a nice point that we can just say is x equals 10, it's at the very end. Minimum, looks like this is gonna be another easy one. This is gonna be down here somewhere, in fact, right here at x equals negative eight. That's awful convenient, I love it when they do that. Okay, it is increasing, now with with this one, looks like we have a couple different spots. So let me erase these lines and we're gonna split this bugger up into a couple little segments here. I think that we all can agree that it pretty much stops increasing right around here. It kind of flattens out a little bit, but then it starts going down after this point. And then right around here is where it starts going back up again. All right. Since our interval is split up, we're going to be using that U notation that we used in a previous task. All right, so it is increasing, starting from the beginning at negative eight to zero. And then it increases again at about, we'll call that five and a quarter to 10. That's pretty close. It, it's probably not about, it's probably not exactly five and a quarter, but it looks close enough to five and a quarter that I'm willing to say that five and a quarter or five and a half, it's somewhere in there. All right, and it is decreasing in between that point. So zero to about five and a quarter, it is going down and we can see that here on our graph. Finally, we need to find our x-intercept, which there is one, it's right over here. Do, 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 right there and it looks like let's see that's negative five negative six I'd be willing to say x equals negative six and a quarter thereabouts and then oh that's not how I wrote it before I wrote it as an ordered pair before let me be consistent okay. and then my y-intercept is up here let's make that green it's right here just above the four. Let's see, so we can write that as zero. Oh, let's call it four and a quarter. Let's. I like the quarters. Apparently, this is a quarter day today. Finally, we need to say whether this is discrete or continuous. 
I'm pretty sure that I can draw that graph without ever lifting my finger. So this is now continuous. All right. I am going to skip the next two because I'm pretty sure that you can do those on your own. I want to actually skip to the very last one here. The last of the graphs here, number seven. And you might be looking at it and going, oh, oh, looky, Devor. There's this place right here where it looks like they overlap. And I know that's really tempting to say, but this is an open dot and this is a closed dot, which means that technically they don't actually line up here. It's, it's a weird little thing. There's a jump in the graph and it happens exactly at this point. And that's what they're doing their best to articulate. This one is actually a function because of that. If this was a closed dot right here, it would not be a function anymore. Okay, that being said, we've got domain, range, max, oop, max, min, increasing, decreasing, x intercept, y intercept. All right. Domain, going left to right. Looks like we start at, this is kind of hard to see. This looks like right here on the y-axis, so we're gonna start here at zero. And despite the fact that there is this jump right here, we're not, it's still continuous through. You now there, there's no leaps really in our x value. So it goes to 21 over here. Now here's where we need to be careful with the range. Looks like it bottoms out at, oh gosh, that is terrible. I can't see that hardly at all. Oh, uh, looks like right around negative three. Looks like our bottom. If it, if, it looks, if it looks different to you on your paper, please let me know because for some reason this is just terrible quality. All right, and our range, now we need to be mindful here of this gap. And we need to make sure that there is that this gap is accounted for somewhere else, somewhere in the in the function. And we see right around here that that gap is filled in, which means that we do actually have a contiguous range. We don't have to fill in any intervals. Okay, so negative 3 and says up here to 10. Cool. Our maximum value, if we look up, 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 oh, here it is, at x equals zero. Then our minimum value, well, let's see, it goes down, 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 it kind of bottoms out here-ish. Looks pretty good. So 16, 17 at about x equals 18. It might look different on your paper, but that's how it looks to me. All right, when we do increasing, decreasing, again, we're going to use our little pen here, and we're going to split it up because up till this point it's decreasing and then it starts increasing again here. It's decreasing, decreasing, decreasing to here and then it goes back up again. All right, let's tackle the increasing first. It increases from here, which looks like six. But because we have an open dot, we have to put it with a soft bracket and we're going to 8 and this is a hard bracket because it includes that value. And then if we look at our next spot looks like we've got from 18 to 20. It's also increasing there. Now for decreasing it starts out decreasing and it goes to 6. And it actually does because we have that dot there. We can say that at six, it's still decreasing. And then takes a little break. It starts increasing again. It starts decreasing again at eight, all the way down to 18. And then it increases again till the end. Cool. X-intercept. We actually have two X-intercepts on this graph. We have this one here-ish and here-ish. That's around the point oh, 17. 
looks about right, and 21. Then the y-intercept, I can't see the axis very well, but I'm pretty sure this is the axis right here, which puts the y-intercept at 0, 10. Now here's where we need to think about continuous versus discrete. When we have a discrete function, the actual best metaphor that I have for that is that it looks like a scatter plot. Even though we jump, it's, it's technically not continuous, but it's not really discrete either. I there There's another term that we can use where it's um, not continuous at all points. So it's continuous at some points, but it's not continuous at all points. Thank you, spell check. And I think with this graph, I am actually going to end the video here. If you need help with other aspects of this task, just because I'm looking at the time and it's getting a little long, uh, if you need other help with other aspects of this task, this should get you started so that you can attempt the rest of the task. If you're still having issues, please send me a message and I might see about posting a follow-up video to this. But please just let me know. That way I can best help you guys be successful with this task. All right, this was uh, Devor doing the task features of functions. If you like what you see, please remember to like and subscribe. That really helps me out. If you could also please leave me a message. Let me know if you like the channel and let me know if there's anything you'd like me to do a video on that's not up yet. All right, remember, be awesome and have an amazing day.